Hello everyone and welcome back to Thinker's Paradox. Today we're diving into one of the most powerful and controversial inventions in human history, nuclear weapons. Before we start, hit that like button, subscribe for more thought-provoking content and let's unravel the atomic tapestry of nuclear arms together. It began in 1945. The world watched in a mix of awe and horror as the first nuclear bombs exploded over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The unprecedented destruction marked the dawn of a nuclear age, a period much defined by technical innovation as by spectre of annihilation. These weapons derived their destructive force from nuclear reactions, releasing energy from atomic nucleus. There are two main types, fission bombs, like those dropped over Japan, and even more powerful fusion bombs, also known as thermonuclear weapons. A fission bomb, also known as an atomic bomb, or an A-bomb, is a type of nuclear weapon that releases energy through the process of nuclear fission, the spitting of a heavy atomic nuclei into a lighter ones. The process releases a massive amount of energy, and is what gives these bombs their destructive power. But how does it all work? Let's break it down. At the core of a fission bomb is a fissile material, typically uranium-235 or plutonium-239. These isotopes are unstable and can be split when struck by a neutron. When a neutron hits the nucleus, it absorbs a neutron and becomes even more unstable, eventually splitting into two small atoms. The split or fission releases additional neutrons and a tremendous amount of energy. The power of fission bomb comes from the chain reaction. The neutrons released from the additional fission can strike other nuclei, causing them to split and release into more neutrons. If enough fissile material is present, known as a supercritical mass, this reaction can become self-sustaining and lead into an exponentially growing of number of fissions, releasing an incredible amount of energy in a very, very short time. Fusion bombs, however, also known as thermonuclear bombs or hydrogen bombs, unleash energy by fusing together a light atomic nuclei. This is the same process that powers our sun and stars across the universe. While fission bombs split heavy atoms, fusion bombs combine light ones to form heavier elements. The product is a force of a million times as strong and more powerful than any fission bomb created. Fusion requires an immense pressure and temperatures to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between nuclei. In the stars, gravity provides this pressure. In fusion bombs, it's a little more complex. The fusion bomb uses a fission reaction to create the necessary conditions for the fusion to occur. This is where the primary and secondary stages come from. Most fusion bombs are designed with two stages. The first stage is a fission bomb. That triggers the second, the fusion stage. The primary stage compresses and heats the secondary stage, which contains the fusion fuel. Typical isotopes of hydrogen like deuterium and tritium. Under extreme conditions created by the primary explosion, hydrogen atoms in the secondary stage fuse to the form helium, releasing neutrons at a staggering amount of energy. This energy not only causes the immense destruction, but also ignites any remaining visible material, adding to the bomb's power. The fusion bomb's power is categorized by an immense light, massive heat, a shock wave that can obliterate any infrastructure, and widespread radioactive fallout. The environmental, humanitarian impact of such weapon is catastrophic making their existence a topic of global concern and efforts towards disarmament. The immediate effects of a nuclear explosion are devastating, blinding light, intense heat, followed by shock waves and radiation. But the long-term consequences from environmental damage to the political fallout are equally profound. After World War II, a nuclear arms race took off, primarily between United States and Soviet Union. This led to a stockpile of thousands of warheads, a delicate balance between power known as mutually assured destruction or MAD. MAD is the idea that a no rational actor would start a nuclear war since it guarantees their own destruction as well. But it's a doctrine that walks a razor's edge. The threat of nuclear war has never fully disappeared. 
In recent decades, proliferation has become a key concern with more countries acquiring nuclear capabilities. The risk of nuclear weapons falling into the wrong hands is a terrifying possibility. International treaties such as the Non-Proliferation Treaty seek to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons and promote disarmament. However, the path to a free nuclear world remains complex and fraught with cha challenges. The story of nuclear weapons is a tapestry of human ingenuity, fear, power, and the quest for peace. It's a reminder of what we're capable of creating and destroying, and a call to responsible stewardship of technology. That's it for today's journey through the atomic age. What are your thoughts on nuclear weapons and their place in this world? Let's discuss in the comments below and remember to like, share and subscribe for more content that delves deep into the history of science. Until next time, keep learning and stay curious.